Welcome once more to devotion. A time when we say, Father, here we are. With thy own soap, wash us. Clean us. Preserve and equip us. And usher us into the brightness of our day. But blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And I believe we are going to go forth in the name of the Lord. And things will fall to us in place and places. May we pray together. Most excellent God, you that know it is from the beginning to the end, we ask that you will speak to us and grant unto us freshness of spirit that we'll be equipped for our day and we'll carry your grace and your power in all that we do. Take the glory, glorious Lord, and be exalted in our lives. In the most excellent name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Today we shall look at a very interesting subject, the love of money. The love of money. And our scripture reading shall be taken from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24. We're going to take 22 to 26. And then we'll take a leap to 1 Timothy, chapter 6, from verse 10 to 12. Our memory verse is Exodus, chapter 23. Verse 8, and it says, You shall take no bribe, for a bribe blinds the discerning and perverts the words of the righteous. We shall take no bribe. The bribes may not only come in cash, bribes could also come in kind. It could come as gifts. It could come in money. In naira, in dollar, in pounds, talent, in whatever form could also come as materials, kind gifts, and cars and houses, and gold and silver. He says, take no bribe, for a bribe blinds the discerning and perverts the words of the righteous. So we ought to be careful. It could also come in offers of contracts. It could come in promotion. It could come in whatever favors. So that I took bribe does not mean I took money only. Whatever it is that is given to influence something that ought not to be could be a bribe. So let's be careful. I'd like us to read Acts of the Apostles chapter 24 from verse 22 to verse 26. Now I'll read from the New King James translation. But when Felix heard these things, Having more accurate knowledge of the way, he adjourned the proceedings and said, When Lysias, the commander, comes down, I will make a decision on your case. So he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty and told him not to forbid any of his friends to provide for or visit him. And after some days, Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Now, as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now. When I have a convenient time, I will call for you. Now take notice, verse 26. Meanwhile, he also hoped, underline that, meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given him by Paul, that he might release him. Therefore, he sent for him more often and conversed with him. Did you hear that? He saw that Paul wasn't actually guilty of anything. He wasn't even afraid of the level of revelation that was coming out of the mouth of Paul. Come to think of it, his wife was even a Jew. So each time he listened to Paul, when Paul gets to some depth, ah, it would strike him. He would say, go, 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 I'll call you another time. What the Bible says in verse 26, that he expected Paul to give him money so that he would release him. But the money never came. 
He did that the first time. He did that the second time. So most of the times he was calling Paul to come and tell him what really happened. What transpired. Why did they arrest you? Why did they bring you here? And showing him some favors. Okay, you guys, allow people to visit him. Don't let anybody, don't restrain his friends. If they bring him food, trust the church. A brother, a pastor is in, is in detention. Help. Visitors will be coming from the church with food and everything. So he saw people coming and he said, wow. This could be good business. Let them give me something. But he never got it. He wanted money to influence his decision. Even though he knew by interacting with Paul that he carried a level of revelation that threatened him and innocence was found in him. Yet, he wanted money. Now let's take the second reading. 1 Timothy chapter 6 from verse 10 to 12. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith, Lay hold on eternal life, to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. The love of money is a root of all evil. Now if you look at this same translation of First Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 from the Amplified Translation, it says, for the love of money, that is, the greedy desire for it and willingness to gain it unethically is a root of all sorts of evil and some by longing for it have wandered away from the path, from faith and pierced themselves through and through with many sorrows. Unethical desire and greed for it has made many pierce themselves with sorrows to do things that are despicable. The love of money. The love of money. It's true money answered all things. But you know that I shouldn't just do anything, compromise my faith, just because I want to get the money. I shouldn't sell my body to get money. I shouldn't steal to make money. I shouldn't cut corners to make money. I shouldn't crucify, betray people to make money. I should not go unethical. To the extent that some even because they want to get money, they kill. They some carry arms. They rob. That's the extremes of it. And the client where we are, people do voodoo to manipulate people on the internet. Because you want to make money. And they damn the consequences. And at the end of the day, they pierce themselves with so much sorrow. That you can't even enjoy the money you've gotten because it's ill gotten wealth. In offices, some change figures, some, some, some manipulate, you, you add percentages because you want to give somebody a contract, you demand for 30%. You inflate, you, infla, uh, you, 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 you inflate figures. We do all manner of white elephant projects, we do several things. That even our conscience pierces us at times. The love of money is the root of all evil. Money itself is not the root of but the love for it. God blesses people. And if the Lord has so blessed you with wealth genuinely, the Bible talks of good riches. And the Bible talks of un ungodly mammon. So we are not saying you cannot be blessed financially. But when you carry it and you run after it greedily, 
unethically. That is the love. Somebody you know deserves something genuinely. You will still not give it to the person. You want the person to give you some tips. Now look at Festus. In Acts chapter, where we read in Acts chapter 24, particularly verse 26. He will call Paul and hear from Paul. And the revelations of Paul will be so heavy, he will become scared. He will say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, this man has actually done no evil. He deserves to go, but um, I think I can get something from the church. Why do you want to circumvent justice? Because you want money. Why would you not just do it for the merit of it? Felix wanted a bribe. His behavior exhibited love for money. I pray today that we will not be such that we keep money before everything we do. Money. And the truth remains that those are run after it that way. They always are entangled in things that offend the soul and offend God. What is my passion? Do I twist justice or show partiality because I want favors from somebody? Do I blind my eyes to corruption? Do I blind my eyes and take decisions that are wrong and ungodly because I want money? The Bible reprimands us in Deuteronomy 16, 19. Don't be blindfolded because of what they think. What is my drive? What is pushing me and pulling me? I want to make it by all means. I'm going to make it this year. I'm going to make it this year. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm going to make it this year. This is my season. This is my year. And the enemy is pulling you here and there. For the love of money is the root of all evil. And many have gone after it. And have never even enjoyed it. Because it is an ungodly balance. It does not last. It grows weeks and it flies away. Meanwhile, you have murdered your conscience. You can no longer sleep. If you look at the book of Amos chapter 5, Amos chapter 5 and verse 12 tells us something. It says, For I know your manifold transgression and your mighty sins. They afflict the just. They take a bribe and they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. You just because somebody appears not to have money, you don't even let the person access to you. You want only those that come with because the love of money. Do you pervert justice? In your position, did you go for money rather than giving people their right? People need employment. You sell the chances. The love of money. So that you can just get more and be on top. The Lord is saying to us today, love not the world. Do not keep money before you. Do not pervert justice. People go to the point of accepting bribes. No. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 3, is it just so you can get more, you will accept bribes and pervert justice? No. Taking bribes does not only mean receiving financial or monetary tokens, like I said. It can mean choosing to compromise in order to help to favor. To what extent have we declared our Christ? He said, no, 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 me, me, I do not take Bible. I don't take Bible. But you are telling them to bring it in kind. Do not perverse justice because you want monetary gain. Do not give other people's opportunities. To those that are undeserving because you want a favor from a particular person. It's a warning. In first Samuel chapter 8, verse 3. And his sons walked not in the way in his ways, but turned aside after lurker and taking bribes and perverting justice, the sons of Samuel. Because people were giving them gifts, they pervert justice. God doesn't want that of us. And so may I be careful. To make sure I use my opportunity and my privileges. Not to make merchandise for myself. God gives us privileges for us to prosper. 
He opens doors for us to be blessing to others and also bless us. But well, let me not use it in a filthy way. Let me not keep monetary gains before me. We hear of a, I have a story of a story of a man that because he wants wealth, one of them sacrificed. He made covenants with his head and he would always wear a cap because maggots were growing in his head in his lifetime. He could not bait, he couldn't wash his face. He couldn't live his full life, he died because of it. Some sacrificed their manhood. You will get the money but you can never make a child. Some sacrificed their womb. Some killed their mothers and their parents, their wives and their children. But when it will present before them, it will present it as though nothing. No, 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 just, it doesn't matter. But as you go deeper, you begin to see sacrifices coming. The love of money. I pray that we do not keep the flesh before us. In whatever capacity you find yourself in authority, do not compromise. Rightness for gains. Do not compromise. The love of money will affect your loyalty to God and your ability to stand for justice. Do you know that people that are hired for murder, that even do low like a tear, and are known as associationists, are driven by the love for it? That somebody will be paid to go kill because of money. And people take excess profit on, on little favors and so called loans because of money. May the Lord deliver us. I pray that today we will flee. He said, Oh man of God, flee. If you're a pastor, and you're prophesying for money. All that comes to church, what you want to see is how much you can give. Flee from it. Let's not keep money before whatever we do. And the Lord says that rather we should pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Remember. That there is so many ways to end a deserving and to live a just life and get decent breakthroughs so many ways rather than sinning and lost and after the what the mammon. Those that get it that way, they are pierced towards and through and may not make the kingdom. They will not fall into the snare. God will still bless you. And you will see true riches come your way if you stand just and sincere. Your little will be more than enough because sickness and disease and troubles of life will be far from you. I pray that we will prosper in well-doing. I pray that we will excel serving God. Let the lust for money die. And let our focus be, Lord, keep me and bless me in your way. But we'll also pray and say, Father, purge my heart of greed and help me to love you more than the riches of this world. Let us pray. That you will deliver us from the lust of this flesh and the lust for carnal riches and the love, negative love and practices for greed and for unethical ways of making money. Lord, I pray that you deliver your church. I pray you deliver that man, that woman. I pray you deliver our hearts from the greed of mammon. They will not pervert justice. They will not misrepresent you in our places of work and wherever we find ourselves. Build us, Lord, to men of integrity. Men that show for justice and dispense it according to the principles of the kingdom. We thank you, Father, for this rebuke and for this encouragement. Cause us to stand true to you and to abide in righteousness and what you love to do. Be exalted, dear Lord. For we thank you for this rebuke and this encouragement. In Jesus' mighty name, may your blessings be upon us. Amen. God bless.